There it is. Good day, everyone. Um, I've been wanting to make this video, uh, this little monologue for a, for a few days, and I've been struggling with what to call it exactly and, and what category of a science to put it in. Um, and, and I think I'm just going to drive myself crazy trying to, um, this is a big part of a lot of the stuff that I talk about and a lot of my activism is about uh, the, the category or the, the, the kind of science that it is. So I'm just going to call it organic humanism or Gaia humanism, reasoning logic or school of thought and uh, just proceed to what I wanted to talk about. Um, have you ever had the experience where maybe you have a few months in the summer or you have a, a time in which your husband or your wife is on a trip and, and now you get to finally uh, fix the garage or paint the house or, or, or have a project that you got to get done within a certain number of, uh, with a certain amount of time and um, you start on the project and you have maybe some friends come over to help and you realize that you weren't maybe that organized or you didn't think about organizing yourself better and days start going by and your friends and yourself are using up the time by doing other things maybe uh, hanging out, partying, arguing about what color to paint, or, or, or maybe somebody says, "Oh, I know where I can find that really cheaply. You know, don't waste your money. Let me go take care of that." And the guy disappears for two or three days, and so he get he didn't get to start the project. And before you know it, you know your husband or your wife is back from their trip, or summer is over, and you say to yourself. I had this period of time in which to do this, to accomplish this, when, it, when am I ever going to be able to finish this, to get this done? Uh, because now i got to wait another year or what have you. And so time, in this case, the time that the person had available to, to accomplish something that he wanted to get done is really the great ruler of of, of this materializing, of the, of, of the possibility of anything occurring. And the same is true for human civilization. Ultimately, if we can't fit within a, a, a given amount of time, the efficacy of what we understand in our society or in a science or in whatever the problem at hand is, if we can't fit it within a certain number of time, it will never happen. Our child will grow and we will never have sent them to the school we wanted to and then it's too late. They're already an adult. It's too late to send them to school. You needed to get that project done when that those you know, those first fifteen years of life were occurring. And the same is applicable to everything we accomplish in civilization. There is a certain amount of time that we have whether it is allocated to a project or just in, in the rate of itself passing um, before we go to bed and we, and, or before a season uh, is over or before anything, whatever measure you want to use, time will, is the ultimate constraint on whatever we end up producing as a world manifesting as a society, as an intelligence, as a science, as a civilization. So in this time of uh, what I, you know, since since a lot of us have been so active on the internet, doing our own form of cyber activism, some of us, some of us just entertain ourselves. Um, I, so we've been learning a lot of things, I believe, about how people argue, how things go down, and as far as uh, diagnosing problems, uh, providing solutions, how many people are able to provide solutions, or 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 what the different perspectives are, and how difficult or how often 
somebody will shed a different kind of light on a, you know, and all the, the problematic and the argumentative dimensions of situations are, are, are able to be looked at on the internet as easily as you can see it on your screen because you can see arguments written in a written form and you see what the typical response to a kind of overture or a perspective on something uh, usually is. Um, and so the state of argumentativeness, if we could call it that, of society is very is very able to be mapped out and seen on, on the internet. And one of the things that I've noticed, and, and this, you know, I'm able to also um, work in two languages, and so I see what happens in different societies uh, regarding their local problems and I'm in a third country so I'm kind of in a, I'm able to create a, a sort of a, um, a a spatial traveling within you know uh, different perspectives on 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 some often the same problems and one of the things that stands out is how combative in a in a confrontational manner of bi bi uh, of bipolar uh, of polarity and binary kind of uh, taking sides uh, forms of arguments are happening you know everybody is about either being liberal or tr or conservative or socialist and or capitalist or being progressive versus um, whatever um, you know um, conservative in any case and it all seems to you know what people are actually talking about are issues that uh, ultimately are are are, uh, are human or uh, are of human organic nature um, of creation, of things that came from the cosmos, from evolution, from 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 fluid, uh, unwalled, undefined, unseparated creation, life or organic. Uh, you know, if you want to understand it through um, ecological sciences, everything is in, in interconnected. There isn't really a separation even species are related and they go towards one species as they're they're more like uh you know life and creation gaia is just a, a will of the cosmos it's like uh the the conditions are right on a planet and the distance from the star and what have you and all of a sudden all this stuff starts happening with water and and temperature and agents and chemicals and biology appears and um and and this marvelous explosion of life happens on a planet uh and and with it comes human beings um and then human beings with its intelligence that initially is supposed to serve its organic purpose of of evolution and proliferation and subsistence of survival in the difficulties of of of, of terrestrial existence of the planet and all the aggression of uh, assaults on our biology and, and through physics that we incur and we have to survive th uh, through the difficulties our bodies are challenged by and so our intelligence evolved um, and it went beyond um, what even the next animal down the line from us is able to uh, to do, to perceive, to understand, and yet it's still organic. I mean, we are still at the service of evolution and uh, survival, proliferation, um, and um, and yet we tackle subjects like sexuality, for example, that is organic, that is not categorized. And, it's got two genders, as we can see pretty much universally um, throughout at least the world. It seems it would go beyond the world uh, as, as, as a component of, of uh, 
of, of life of create uh, of, uh, of of life that have appeared on the planet you would guess it's not limited only to life on this planet the uh the, the predilection of sexuality to be a fusion of two opposing complementary um uh genders that are separate and and then they when they must uh, uh they must um uh, complement and complement her to create a, the ex another little combustion explosion of life to occur and and then the two genders get again uh, determined um, and so other than very few things that we could say clearly it is this or that um, life in itself and all of the aspects that are about humanity are organic they're not really categories they're not really and yet when I look at all these conversations and arguments discussions and fights that are going on in, in the internet it seems that uh, we are defaulting to confront to to battles of of, of of two two team two ideologies two perspectives um, and you know, and you kind of wonder about why is it? You know, why? You know what? You know, I, without even going into that, which that should be a different video. What I'm trying to say is, understanding and being good. I mean, our our prime directive should be to understand ourselves and to understand how we we biologically, chemically, naturally, um, life form wise function as a species to better assist ourselves in in our existence right so what would be more important than to really understand how human beings how we are as uh, per design <laughs> per specifications if you will to better help us do better and perform and and suffer less of the things that our vulnerabilities to nature, to the earth, to the elements would uh, uh, would would put us in, um, and this is not a, a a an easy science. I mean, we've been um, studying ourselves in life and biology for a long time, but we still uh, haven't perhaps covered everything, although it seems that we have pretty much understood the basics, and yet it seems that we're preoccupied with an, an, another uh, form or another modus of, of uh, exercising our intelligence, which is thinking what we should think. In other words, seeing uh, life, uh, an ob what was my hand there? <laughs> Seeing something before you, seeing something before you, and and then thinking, this is how we should understand that. That's an ideology. An ideology is looking at something that life created often, if not always, um, creation, evolution, life, and starting to think what we should think about it. And we do that with... Um, with people too. We know that if uh, somebody steals something from you, there will be, uh, we will be enraged, we'll be angry, we will act up. And then instead of staying in that uh, dimension or in that realm of the organic design of our mind, uh, which would continue, for example, that a person feels bad that they got you upset or that they hurt you or they're able to uh, access their somehow circumstances let that person to instead of forget about what they just stole from somebody uh, they're made by whatever circumstances to ponder again on what they just did and they access their natural remorse and 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 so redemption is sought and all this is already sort of part of the mind doesn't always happen. <laughs> um, we want to we want to leave our suffering, and that also means where we hurt because of what we did. We kind of want to forget our, our our ill doings onto others and to life, and because we all we want to escape suffering. 
but when circumstances uh, make that person face what they just did to somebody else, there is a part that they will go back and try to, you know, either give it back, give the object back, and then that person that was feel, first felt angry and wanted to hurt that person that robbed from them, all of a sudden finds forgiveness and, uh, or, you know, maybe doesn't even expect um, anything to 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 uh, be amended to uh, doesn't expect to punish that person that just stole from them that is more to do with something we created outside of the existing dynamics of the natural mind and it is the the field of moralities of behavior what we feel we ought to do to people or how uh, they, what ought to happen to people who cause uh, uh, discomfort or assault society in whatever way or another person. And so we start talking about ideologies, about, for example, punishment. Um, you know, in the natural mind, the construct of punishment of for so many years or so many lashes uh, does not actually exist. We feel angry when they steal and we want to hit that person right away when they hurt us or they hurt one of the people we love and we want to defend. But as soon as that was resolved, either because we got the object back or that person felt bad and said, I'm sorry, we're done. <laughs> there, there is, we're, we continue to learn about ourselves and continue to grow and, and, and make our societies work. It is the uh, analytical or logical precocious intelligence or the scientific mind and uh, highly elaborating intelligence capacity that mankind has that not only created sciences that are very good at exploring and discovering things but also went into the field of, of ethics and morality and that's where we started messing really badly against ourselves socially uh, and, and, us, and, and, and curtailing and limiting what we would otherwise perhaps have a much easier time in, re, in resolving socially. We also make mistakes in science. Um, you know, we, we create things that end up polluting or being bad for our body or what have you, and, or structures that don't hold up and collapse, killing thousands of people. But, um, and, and we learn from the science. The sciences were able to uh, repair uh, and, and on, on the spot and uh, after incidences. But with it, when it comes to how we apply our intelligence towards our social, civil orders, um, morality and ethics and all this, it, it's a little more difficult. We, we kind of have a hard time assuming what should be the first thing that we realize as human beings is that our intelligence does not we, we can't handle it well it does we don't know how to handle our intelligence it's something bigger than what our nature is capable of handing handling it's too large for our hands and so by as a as a at, at, for default or sort of by it, it will be a constant given of an unbalanced and unstable situation of a relationship that we have with our own intelligence. Like when I, uh, like I said, for the sciences, it's a little more obvious. We can see clearly when we made a mistake, and then the next time around we are better. But when we apply this intelligence towards things about living, how we treat each other so socially, and how we address uh, civil, political. Um, anything that has to do with humanity, it's a little difficult because we don't, we're still not, we still hadn't, haven't gotten to the place where the first thing we consider is that we're probably wrong. Our intelligence just fails. It can't, it, it doesn't know how to keep, how to serve the collective integrally and not leave anybody out or not, or, or care enough and love enough to stop immediately when we see we're hurting some people or some people are not benefiting from our latest uh, invention or our latest uh, intellectual construction. We seem to want to 
plow forward and you know so there's a lot of inadequacy um, but in any case going back to where I started this video um, it is I think it really behooves us to uh, diminish the amount of uh, effort and time we are spending on ideologically prescribing what we ought to think about people's behavior and, and, and what kind of ideological category or, or school of thought or what kind of um, um, sort of class of of uh, intellectual thinking, political, what class of political thinking that person is having, so that we can continue to battle, uh, you know, left against right and socialists against or progressives against traditionals, and, um, and instead go back to how the human being needs to exist socially and how the body is and how the, you know. Um, you can see it in all of these recent ideal ideologies that we have been uh, bringing into civil law like regarding gender and abortion and really the design is made already uh, by, for humanity um, and what we can do is try to help it and and and, and seize the, the problems that are created because of what we create. In other words, if the, there's a problem with uh, women becoming pregnant, with, uh, not wanting to for the wrong reasons, whether it be rape or because they, they thought they didn't care or they, they wanted to have fun or the, the father disappeared or whatever the reason is that uh, the pregnancy and all of a sudden becomes a problem. It is not a problem of the pregnancy. It is not a problem that need that it, it, it is not the pregnancy that needs to be solved. It is the social condition, the social circumstance that is a problem that we created. We created a type of living, a type of thinking about each other, a type of thinking of, towards sexuality, a type of thinking towards other people, a level of regard and respect towards sexuality, towards other people, uh, towards uh, babies. And so all of it plays into somebody not caring toward and not, not putting responsibility towards the place where our offspring are born, our pregnancy, our, our sexuality. And that's the problem that needs that's where the problem is. The problem is not the pregnancy itself. And but, see, we're not wanting to be accountable for ourselves. We continue to want to boss ourselves ideologically and how, what we should do and address the problems that we created without accountability and trying to solve them. And so we keep using up that time, this precious time that we have, in wanting to uh, instruct over misinstruction in other words instead of learning and supporting our design better so that we are uh, the best that we can be including our the, the, the broader freedom given to us by our, um, our perception the, the, the appearance of our will before ourselves so we can, you know, what I'm trying to say is that we can now see that a pregnancy can be interfered, can be stopped, can be, now, we have this, it's, it's symbolic of, of, of all of uh, the influence and the, um, the uh, inter, not, how do you say it, involvement, what is it that countries do and uh, the United States does in Latin America, and not involvement, interference, um, Oh, I can't in Venezuela. I can't remember. Anyways, we we can. Um, oh, Jesus! Let me pause for a second. Intervention, intervention. I don't know why I, I always forget that word. Uh, we this gr heightened or greater capacity, a human capa intelligent capacity that we have, allows us to uh, intervene in our own 
natural exists. So we can decide things that we can decide to cure diseases. We can decide to uh, die in ways that are that are not dramatically uncontrollable and painful, but we can we have uh, you know an ability to no longer suffer famine and uh, wonderful ways that we can interfere with our earthly predicament. Um, and also we can interfere with uh, pregnancy. Now, what we're doing though is because we're prescribing upon the problems that we create, we're prescribing how to think about, how to reason, how to ideologically analyze the problems that we ourselves created. Um, we're using up all this precious time as I referred to in the beginning of the video, and wastefully, we're not getting the project done. <laughs> we're not taking care of the species for its optimal living organic experience. Um, we're using up all this time in, 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 in rigging and in, in jimmy rigging um, problems that we created um, and creating more problems because this is the thing. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that we could, for example, interfere, interfere when we see the baby's going to be born without arms, you know, and, and it's always going gonna, gonna to have this life where it's always thinking, why was I born without arms, right? So we don't want to give it that life. Um, and, and so we can interfere and use the things that we can do for good rather than to go against the design of life. In abortion, there's a lot of things that we're obliterating, uh, the responsibility of males in sexuality and pregnancy and the, res the commitment. You know, what, what we're doing is instead of seeing, well, we have a problem with males who don't respect women and get, her, get them pregnant and don't care about the baby that would be theirs, uh, we're not seeing that as a problem. That is a problem we should be addressing instead of addressing abortion. So we're completely off. Um, but besides that point, um, besides that point is is that not only are we letting this the, the, the window of time opportunities go past and not bringing forth the world that we could have, but we're adding, because we're never going to be able to separate and detach and to sever ourselves from a calling to be and to go by the natural design. That's why we always love seeing animals in nature, and that's why we love a a bird much more when it's flying free than when it's in a cage, although we we train ourselves to things. We train ourselves to uh, to use our body sexually a certain way. And then we build a whole civil value construct around that to be able to place that category in society. Um, we, it will always feel better to drink clean water than to drink uh, something that is heavily treated with, with flavorings and, and stuff. It, we learn to like Coca-Cola, but the, the, that part in our brain that will feel suddenly a rush of pleasure when we have that fresh, clean water right from the stream will never go away. It's like our, in Spanish, they, they call it our, our earth line, our ground line, you know, like the, the, the line of a kite that it can go as high as it wants, but it's tied to the ground somewhere, it will never fly away. Um, and so because we have this part of our collective psyche and in each one of us that will always reference ultimate and optimal comfort by our organic natural design, everything else that, uh, that ventures us off into the design that we invented um, will 
carry with it sort of like alarm bells or intuitive calls to towards discomfort, towards something that doesn't quite sit us right. It's like sort of the analogy of of having created uh, sort of the gay uh, class uh, in society. Homosexuality is just an expression of human sexuality that anybody can experience and to some people because of some reasons it feels more like something that they need or or that uh, that uh, um, soothes or calms or uh, is, is sought a kind of a place where love is still needed to be found and some people instead have like oh yeah I get it I see there's pleasure here too and everything but you know something is not quite mm, it feels like too much it feels like this is not something I want to swallow, you know. But still, everybody can experience it for all of its characteristics. So it's part of human sexuality. We instead had to solve the questions or the problems that were identified and misdiagnosed by creating a social class. What happens? Because it's... A part of human sexuality and because it doesn't separate people homosexuality doesn't separate people into different categories of people and we do the same thing when we call people black or white or Asian or Latino we create something that natural design does not know natural design does not know a separate category of gay people or of black people white people or Latino people when we introduce a categorizing separation we send off one of those intuitive uh, uh, sort of alarms, you know, so, sort of like calls to you're doing something wrong, you know, the intuitive mind says. You're not supposed to separate yourself that way by sexuality or by the skin, by the color of your skin. You're not supposed to be a separate. And we don't know it, of course, because everything that we believe is a constantly evolving and layering based on what we educated ourselves before to believe. And so we think that this is just. You know, we have these conditions that, and these problems that need to be solved, and we understand the problem, through the problems through these elements. And so, people argue within that enormous field of elements that have been around for the longest time, and that's how they are. They, that, that, those, those are the pieces they learn to move around in their argument, and so they don't. We lose touch with. Uh, those intuitive calls and those alarm bells that very quietly in the back of our subconscious are never letting us, never letting that kite fly away. You know, that cord is always tied to the ground. And so what we're doing is we're creating additional complications that maybe we don't really, we don't feel the growth of those complications below us, but we're m spending all that much more time making a complicated world that eventually we're going to have we come around needing to resolve because that calling to the natural organic design will always be there somewhere saying reminding us you're going off somewhere what have you done what is this enormous thing that you're dealing with now i'm not saying that that um gaia philosophy or humanist human organic science uh, uh, philosophy would make a sim an oversimplified world where uh, we would just be like these <laughs> some science fiction film of like pure purely dressed in cotton kind of futuristic beings that don't have any complications and just pick food off the trees no we have a a demanding intelligence that wants to and can and we ought to do things but the question is where and how towards what do we apply the capacity to do a lot of elaborate high intelligent things well, how do we do we assist uh, what we want uh, which is the organic human being to succeed and to wherever it finds difficulty or wherever its natural design is challenged perhaps help it even help it achieve because nature you know we we do identify things that nature would not want anybody to be born without 
an arm, <laughs> you know. Uh, there is such a thing as a an optimal sort of core design that is perfect, and nature it, it's not it doesn't make mistakes. It has there are reasons in evolution that these things happen, and not because it it helps evolution, but because it's maybe a price that comes with the way evolution works. Nonetheless, we can see these things and say, okay, we know we don't want anybody to be born without an arm, so we can assist. So right there, that's a lot of effort and intelligence that needs to go to a science that upholds and supports the natural human design. And as such, there is a lot of human natural design that as it is right now, we're identifying as well because we didn't understand it or it was too murky of an area to go into um we solved it in other ways and so we, there's a whole bunch of ways that we're going about civilization that are not really enhancing of how optimally society society would gel and and the human collective and you know, and also, I was thinking a lot about this, too, because all the problems we have must also come from predispositions. And so why is there so much polarity, confrontation, binary kind of thinking, and the most simple, sensible logic to resolve a lot of our issues are right there, right underneath our noses, and we're not seeing them. Uh, so there must be like a force that is, it could be that we evolved for so long separated in, in, in clans and different languages and different cultures that it may be sort of already bred into our evolution, not that ultimately perhaps evolution is not seeking to reunite the species again or, or maybe these are two forces that are simultaneously um, going forward, if the planet were larger, <laughs> perhaps we would, uh, uh, the one that is dividing us would probably succeed and a new species would appear somewhere else in another part of that world. Um, but as it is right now, it seems that we're closer to where, to Lake Victoria, where we were all started together, and that it would be easier to just we're still the same human being, so it seems that we would be it would be easier to resolve our differences, uh, and perhaps that's where creators or or higher human intelligence or God or what have you has been trying to install the in in, in human throughout human history the little light bulb that says you are one one God one 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 you know to try to focus again on that but there's something that we're, keeps making want, making us want to take sides right and it, like i'm saying it's perhaps something it's in, in it's in us already it's easier to resolve when there's less to argue about and by creating two teams we can just go at it and fight it off and um even though we're completely missing how the singular design of uh, that organic social human uh, biological reality may be um, we get stuck in fighting ideologies and so uh, you know that would require a concerted effort to realize we have to fight our tendency to find it easier to fight when really what we want is to be in plenitude, happiness, and happiness, safety, <laughs> not fearing we're going to be attacked or accosted, assaulted by something, another human being. Um, and so a concerted effort to resolve this uh, difficulty we have in achieving oneness and, and dis 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 diffuse binary confrontations going on right now like crazy everywhere you want to argue it seems that there's two two sides to take maybe may require a a more focused appreciation for uh, for it as a problem that is not letting us see really why things uh why problems occurred or or what the nature of the singular functioning 
social organism that is humanity underneath is what it really is about. Okay, so I'm going to stop before it turns to 40 minutes. Bye, thanks.